they will be sinning against God. Paul says in verse 14, this is very important, chapter 14, verse 14, he says, As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am, conf- I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. Paul was convinced that you could eat the food that had been sacrificed to idols and buy it in the marketplace and eat it. And then in verse 23, Paul says this. He says, But the man who has doubts about unclean food is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So even though Paul said it was not a sin for him to eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols, because he was fully convinced that it was okay. If he forced a brother who wasn't convinced, if he forced the brother to eat that meat, that brother would be sinning against God because the brother would be going against the convictions, the things that God had placed on his heart or the things, the place that God had him at that time. Paul says in verse 15, a very good um, reminder for us, do not by your eating destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Don't let your freedom in Christ destroy your brother or sister and their faith. Paul says throughout this chapter, don't judge each other. We could go, we could go through and read those, those passages. He, he does it in verse 1, in verse 4, in verse 10, and in verse 13. And 13, within the range of 13 verses, he tells us four times to not judge our brother or sister. He says, don't condemn and don't look down on your brother and sister in Christ on disputable matters. These smaller issues in the Christian life, these disputable matters are dangerous because they, they destroy our unity. They destroy peace in the church. And Paul says in verse 19, Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. Paul says instead of quarreling over these disputable matters, over these smaller issues that the Bible hasn't spoken directly to, do what leads to peace. Get along with each other and build each other up. In verse 22, Paul Paul gives some advice on how to keep the peace. If you're wondering how to keep the peace on a disputable matter that you're struggling with, Paul gives a little advice in verse 22. Uh, My paraphrase of of his advice is, is this. Keep your mouth shut. On a disputable matter, just keep your mouth shut. Um, the, The exact quote is this. Paul says in verse 22, So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Keep between yourself and God. It's fine if you have the conviction that it's okay for you to drink alcohol. That's fine. But don't force your conviction on your brother or sister in Christ who has a different conviction. We need to keep our mouths closed on those issues. If you judge your brother or sister in Christ on disputable matters... If you condemn your brother or sister, if you look down on your brother or sister in Christ because you have because they have different convictions from you, Paul says that you're not only destroying your brother or sister for whom Christ died, but he says in verse 20 that you're destroying the work of God. And, and that's a serious offense. That's a serious offense. That's a sin to destroy the work of God. Paul says in verse 20, he says, Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it's wrong for a man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. Just because you have freedom in Christ to eat or drink or watch a certain show doesn't mean that you should force that conviction on someone else. And that's what's dangerous about convictions. You hold to them firmly. You believe in your heart. This is what God has called you to do. And you've got to remember that that's between you and God. 
That's, that's your conviction, not their conviction. And this is a disputable matter. And no matter how strongly you feel about it, you need to be careful about your brother or sister in Christ who may be weaker than you on that issue of faith. And Paul is saying here that the, the stronger faith should always submit to the weaker faith. The more mature believer should always submit their freedom to the less mature believer in those issues and not cause that younger Christian, that newer Christian, uh, that Christian in a different place in life to stumble by forcing your convictions on that person. Unity and harmony among believers is vital for the mission of the church. Paul is telling us if we spend all of our time, there are a hundred things that we could argue over. There are, there are hundreds of things in our life that are disputable matters that we could argue over. And if we spend our time doing that, we will lose our, our energy, our effectiveness, we'll lose our witness. Uh, in National Geographic, there was an article about the Arctic wolf, and Arthur David Mack described how a seven-member pack of Arctic wolves attacked several uh, musk, musk oxen calves who were guarded by 11 adults. As the wolves approached the prey, the musk oxen bunched up in an impenetrable semicircle. Their deadly hooves faced out, and the calves remained safe during the long standoff with the Arctic wolves. But then a single ox broke rank, and the herd scattered into nervous little groups. A skirmish ensued, and the adults finally fled in panic, leaving the calves to the mercy of the predators, and not a single calf survived. When we are unified, the church is strong. We're strong against the enemy, and the church accomplishes its purpose and its mission. And God is glorified. We provide a great witness. But when we break ranks with each other, we're easy prey for Satan, and the work of God is destroyed. So we must be careful not to judge each other on disputable matters. We must make every effort, Paul says, to do uh, what causes us to live in peace and harmony. And so to summarize this teaching in, in, Matthew, or in uh, Romans chapter 14, uh, there are three points. Three points. It's not written out on any sermon outline, but three points that, that can summarize this teaching. Number one, in disputable matters, let your convictions determine your actions. In disputable matters, let your convictions determine your actions. And again, these are on disputable matters. These aren't core issues of the faith. These aren't uh, issues that are directly addressed in Scripture. These are issues that are not direct, directly addressed. In those disputable matters, let your convictions determine your actions. Paul says in verse 5, he says, One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Each, one should, each man should be fully convinced in his own mind. If you believe in your heart that drinking alcohol is wrong, then you better not drink alcohol or you will be sinning. In disputable matters, let your convictions determine your actions. Number two, in disputable matters, don't pass judgment on your brother or sister in Christ if their convictions are different from yours. The second thing that we learn, in disputable matters, don't pass judgment on your brother or sister in Christ if their convictions are different from yours. Paul says in verse 3, he says, The man who eats must eat not looking down on him who does not eat. And the man who does not eat must not condemn the man who does, for God has accepted him. If you believe in your heart that drinking alcohol is wrong, you need to be careful not to judge your brother or sister in Christ when you see them enter the stuga. 